Hello everybody. I want to welcome you to the Health Solutions um, Beehive channel. And my name is Katie Velarde and I am a proud member of the community here and also was an employee at Health Solutions for several years and just really love and support um, the mission of this organization. So um, I have loved doing some of these videos. I don't know if you've caught me of my other ones, but today we will be talking about the metaphysical properties of natural gemstones. So gemstones have been, I guess we could really call it an obsession of mine since uh, before I was 18 uh, years old. I actually um, own a company where I make natural gemstone diffuser bracelets to use with essential oils. And so over the years, I've read many, many books on um, gemstones and crystals. Here are a couple of my favorites. Crystals for healing, creating positive change through the power of crystals. This is a complete reference guide. And this one I really enjoy as well, Crystals for Beginners, a really nice book. And um, those are both, um, you know, Barnes and Nobles, uh, Amazon. And one of my other very favorite books is called The Encyclopedia of Crystals. So if you want to learn more about gemstones and crystals after this video, then certainly those are some fantastic resources. Um, so do you remember or have you ever been a kid, you know, walking on the beach or in the mountains or down the street or, you know, digging in the dirt and you come across a rock or um, a stone, um, could have even been if you're here in Colorado, some rose quartz or some quartz and it just, it, it hold some special, you know, you just keep it and you put it in your pocket or you collect them somewhere. Um, so you could have been drawn to their color, texture, shape, shine, or perhaps, and probably it's the energetic resonance of that particular stone that resonated with you at that time. Um, crystals and gem uh, stones hold great healing power because they are tangible. They're tangible. We can see them physical forms. I'm wearing a lapidolite bracelet today. Um, lapidolite is one of my favorite gemstones, kind of helps keep me calm. Um, and so um, they're tangible, meaning we can see and feel these, right? And so as an aid in um, healing, it's nice to be able to have something in, in your hand. Um, so, scientists often describe crystal formations as growing, even though they're not technically alive. However, crystals grow in nature when liquid rock, known as magma, cools and hardens. Each crystal starts small and grows larger and larger as um, more atoms are added. I don't know if you've seen photos, but there are literally the most amazing, and I will visit at some point in my life, and I hope you can too. I don't know where the closest one is, but crystal caves, okay? Um, there are caves. This is an all natural, looks like just rock on this side, right? This is amethyst. How beautiful is that? Can you imagine an entire cavern of amethyst? Um, so some are subjected to enormous pressures. Others grow in chambers. Some crystals were laid down into the earth in layers and others have dripped into existence. What's especially amazing is that as they form, the molecules actually have to gather together in a highly organized way, which creates what's called crystal lattices, okay? Then these lattices repeat and stem out in all directions where that crystal is growing. So crystal lattices are perfectly and specifically uniform, okay? So there are actually um, seven different classifications for crystals. Um, the categories are based on the shape of the crystal lattices that we just talked about, and they each have a slightly different energy. So we're going to go over the seven different um, crystal systems and generally associated properties. The first one is the cubic crystal system, okay? They have the highest symmetry. Not only do all the angles equal 90 degrees exactly, but all the sides have the same exact length as well. These stones possess a basic building block kind of energy, kind of like the foundation of a house, and they give structure and can help with the 
bulky, heavy earth plane kind of problems. Um, as building blocks, they assist in the repair of damaged cellular structures from the molecular structure of DNA to the bones of the skeletal system, okay? Um, examples are diamonds, garnets, pyrite, sodalite, and fluorite. Now, diamonds, yes, very expensive. Garnets, pyrite, medium. Sodalite and fluorite, affordable. Um, and so they all have the cubic crystal system. Um, so depending on which one resonates with you most and um, what your budget might be for the value of the stone there. And then second, we have hexagonal systems. So um, these are very complex structures, but efficient in use of space. Um, it is the same shape that a bees actually use to do their honeycombs. I'm sure you can uh, visualize a honeycomb. Um, likewise, these stones encourage growth and reaching goals through a step-by-step -step process. So if you're needing to take something in your life just a step at a time, a hexagonal system gemstone would be great for you. Um, some examples are emeralds, aquamarine, appetites, Beryl, which is B-E-R-Y-L, and then also Morganite. So again, they range in price there, um, but there are affordable gemstones in each category, um, lucky for us. Next is the monoclinic system, and these have the inner shape of a parallelogram. Yeah, that takes me way back to, um, I don't know if it's middle school or high school algebra, but um, parallelogram. These stones promote clarity okay clarity of mind um, clarity of purpose clarity of whatever it is you need clarity of so like a parallelogram they seem to point the way and clear away trivial obstacles that you might be facing some examples are azurite epidote jade kunzite lapidolite and malachite and moonstone some beautiful very affordable gemstones in that um, group so, um, orthorhombic crystal systems is the fourth one. And these are characterized by having three unequal axes, axes of symmetry at 90 degrees and a rhombic shaped inner structure, back to algebra, okay? The energy from this system brings focus and stability. It helps you identify problems and contain them until the inner meaning is thoroughly understood because whatever issue whatever problem we're facing inside before we can release it or before we can really let it go we need to understand what it means for us what it means for our personal growth um which can be really hard so i like these ones um aragonite celestite and danburite are some examples so Tetragonal systems um, include all crystals with a rectangular inner structure, okay? These crystals tend to be very balancing, and this is beautiful. They are transmuting stones because they change the negative energy they absorb and turn it into positive energy that they then emit. Gemstones just like everything else in this world, are made of frequencies, vibrations, aka energy. And so the vibration of each of these different um, crystal systems is how they derive their specific metaphysical properties. So some examples of the tetragonal system gemstones are um, wolfenite and zircon, um, and then um, apophyllite, A-P-O-P, H-Y-L-L-I-T-E, okay? We have two more. So there's the triclinic system. These have the inner shape of a tra trapezium and they have no right angles, no right angles. That's kind of cool. Um, these stones are harmonizing and tend to balance and integrate strong polarized attitudes, okay? They assist in connection with higher states of consciousness. So moving toward more of an open mind or out of difficult situations. The triclinic gemstones, um, there are many actually that are, are super common that you can find. Uh, Amazonite, Kyanite, Labradorite, 
rhodonite, sunstone, and turquoise. Now, um, after I introduce the next system, I want to talk briefly about um, when you're gemstone shopping. So the seventh crystal system is called the trigonal system, triangles, and include many of the favorite popular stones. So their energy is always spinning, okay? So the trigonal um, crystal system, the energy of these stones is always moving, always spinning. And this gives them a calming and balanced nature. People tend to be drawn to them for the simplicity they bring and the variety of uses. Some examples of the trigonal gemstones, and there's uh, quite a few, uh, agates, amethyst, which um, we talked about earlier, um, aventurine, bloodstones, calcite, carnelians, chalcedony, citrine, hematite, jasper, quartz, sapphire, tiger's eye, tourmaline, and many more. So there are a lot of gemstones to be had in the trigonal systems. So just so you know, the precision and reliability and the energy around gemstones is not, um, it is, is based in science. It's not just like we think this is what it is. Um, the precision and reliability of crystal frequency has been very useful in common electronics that we use every single day. This includes our cell phones, computers, many medical devices, such as a crystal oscillator that is used to power the MRI equipment. So, um, in fact, in the early 1960s, the ruby crystal, because of its certain frequency and vibration, was a key component in the first laser developed by Bell Telephone Laboratory scientists. So, Pretty amazing. Um, LED televisions also are a result of um, crystals and their uh, their frequencies and vibrations. So, not only can they create amazing um, things in our lives, you know, technology, but they have this amazing power to heal and um, balance our bodies. So, um, this is one of my favorite books as well, The High Vibe Guide. And again, I showed you the other, some of the other crystal books earlier. So when purchasing a crystal, um, go with your gut. So if you go to a shop and you're looking at all the crystals, you can kind of follow your gut and see which one resonates most with you, which one like kind of stays in your hand and you just don't want to put it back down. You need to buy that one. You need to keep it in your pocket, keep it in your bag, keep it close to you, um, necklace, uh, whatever, whatever way works. Um, also, like everything else, buyer beware. Um, there is a lot of fake um, turquoise out there, um, different stones. That just seems to be a common one because it's popular in jewelry. And so when you're getting a gemstone, you want to make sure you know where you're shopping and that they know their gems and that they are genuine and authentic um, so that you can reap um, some of the benefits that we talked about. So I thank you so much for joining me today. I encourage you to um, pick up some books, to look on the internet about what gemstones may help certain situations. And if I can be of any assistance, um, my email is glitterzen, so that's G-L-I-T-T-E-R-Z-E-N at iCloud.com. So you can email me. You can also visit my website at glitterzen.com. So Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spending time with you today. Thank you for being here and may you move forward with the power of healing crystals.